All right, welcome everybody to the peer review, the volunteer role worth doing session here at SAEM. This is the last didactic session of the day before the, uh, um, there's a reception afterwards, is that right? With cocktails and Jeopardy? All right, very good. And the current, or have you handed off your um, role yet? Handed it off already? All right. The immediate past president is here, so this is going to be a credible, excellent presentation. Okay? We are going to include full audience participation. I have a microphone. I am going to be running around the audience asking for folks to volunteer this manuscript review session. I've got a sign here that says seating available in this row. There's plenty of seats up front, okay? You guys ready to go? All right, we have uh, four panelists here. My name is Mark Meisick. I am one of the uh, editors at Academic Emergency Medicine. I wanted to introduce my co-panelists here. We have Jeffrey Hayes who worked a night shift. He's from Indiana. He is one of the resident editors of Academic Emergency Medicine. He is ending his term tomorrow. We have Andrew Moore from Northwestern. He is also one of the resident editors of Academic Emergency Medicine. He is also ending his term tomorrow. Both of them are handing off their duties and responsibilities to our future resident editors. They're here in the audience. Thank you for joining us. And at the very end, there's a man who needs no introduction. I'm going to introduce him anyway. It's uh, Jeffrey Klein. He's the editor-in-chief of Academic Emergency Medicine, and he is a very busy man. He is the only one here who has to disclose something. I believe he gets a few coins from uh, SAEM to uh, buy some coffee, I guess, as a stipend for being the editor of what is a pretty good journal. Okay? So at the end of this session, we really want everybody to understand this peer review role, which is mysterious and opaque and shrouded in mystery. So we want you to understand why we do it, its imperfections, and hopefully by the end of this hour, you will be able to provide a fair and effective manuscript review. Just because this is a smaller audience, feel free to come up front. I'm going to be asking for volunteers. I'm going to ask for a raise of hands right now. Who here is a student? Okay, all the way in the back. Very good. Come closer. All right. You're a future resident, hopefully. We want to know your face. We're going to be recruiting you for joining us. All right, who's a resident? Do we have some residents here? Excellent. Do we have some fellows? Excellent. Do we have some faculty members? Okay, excellent. Who here has been a peer reviewer for a journal before? Raise your hand. Okay, a few of you. Great. Who here has been an author on a manuscript that's been submitted to a journal and that manuscript either got rejected or accepted and you got to see the decision letter? A few of you. Okay. These decision letters are pretty complicated. These decision letters are written by editors with contributions from peer reviewers, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So I wanted to start off, I just have just a couple of minutes of uh, comments, and then I'm going to turn this over to the rest of the panel. This is a quote from Forbes magazine from a few years ago. Uh, Jeffrey uh, Barrett, who's a cancer epidemiologist from Albert Einstein in New York, wrote a commentary about the challenging crisis that peer review is facing today. He acknowledges it is not a perfect process. We've had some form of peer review since 1752. Uh, it was reportedly started in London, and it was a mechanism by which societies and journals used external people to review a work before a society put its name on it and disseminated it widely to a bigger audience. And it was a mechanism that was designed to prevent fraudulent or biased information from getting out there. Now, interestingly enough, in this commentary in Forbes, this doctor recognizes that the process of peer review hasn't changed very much in over 200 years, and he admits it's not perfect. And there are many people out there that are trying to make the process better by making the process unblinded, making it open, rewarding reviewers in different ways. Most journals use the peer review process that we have at Academic Emergency Medicine, so I think it's important for those new to this to learn what has been done historically, and from there we can improve the process and make it better. It is an important way of making sure that what people are reading has been vetted by someone other than the author. 
The ugly truth is it's not a paid job. It takes a lot of time. There are different ways of uh, compensating people. Some journals give continuing medical education for serving as a peer reviewer. Um, some journals will acknowledge your service by asking you to review even more if you're a really good reviewer. And then one of these days you get invited to join an editorial board and you become an editor-in-chief, which is pretty cool. If you do good work, like in emergency medicine, you are invited to do more work. Um, it is really time consuming to review a paper and it can be frustrating as a reviewer because at the end of the process you often see a decision letter, you are blinded on it, and you don't know whether or not your comments added much value to the final decision if your comments are contradicted by other reviewers' comments. It is really frustrating for some people who don't understand how this process works. But it really is an important service to one society. We do this because we are trying to help each other out, get our work out there, and get it out in a way that makes sense to people. You know, what reviewers don't recognize is when they see a work that's submitted to a journal, it is a rough manuscript. It's different from the type of manuscript you will see in a journal club setting because those manuscripts have reportedly, allegedly gone through some peer review process and they are published. The manuscripts that get submitted to a journal benefit a lot from the insightful comments and observations of peer reviewers. And many of these manuscripts become much better and the authors are quite thankful, but this service is unrecognized in most cases. But it's an important contribution to papers that end up contributing to the canon of medical literature. And uh, most importantly, I think, being a peer reviewer enlightens one's own scholarship. I find that when I review a paper, it really amazes me what a different perspective I have about certain questions I have when working in the ED, or even how to write things in a better way or a different way. I think one of the most uh, rewarding parts about being an editor for this journal is seeing an outstanding review submitted to the journal, especially by somebody who's younger and newer to this process, because it really confirms to me why we continue doing this. It's really important, we need to be good about it, and we need to help each other out. So I just wanted to end with this title. This is a real title from an editorial from another journal, and in this journal, the editor-in-chief was asking the readers of that journal that they need to remember when they're asked to be a reviewer, they have also been an author. And these authors put their hearts and souls into doing their studies and writing their findings up and submitting them to a journal. So if you're going to review a work, you need to be professional and collegial and constructive because we want to help each other out and make the process and ultimately make patient care better, okay? I'm going to turn it over to Jeff Quine. He's got a few comments, and we're going to turn it over to Jeff and Andrew.